Hey, good morning folks. Chris Denny with Danny's Country Life. Uh, welcome to the shop this morning. I got a couple things I wanted to show you. Uh, a little bit of uh, mill action. I know some of you guys have been wanting to uh, see that. And uh, I, it, my very first ever uh, fan mill video. So fan mill is something that I, you know, I definitely never expected to get. Um, my uh, my humble little channel has a wonderful uh, wonderful following, some really loyal uh, uh, loyal subscribers, and for that I'm very very appreciative. Uh, thank you all, thank you all very much for being uh, part of the channel, part of our life. Uh, we appreciate that. Um, we appreciate every comment and uh, you know every thumbs up and, and every view. It it really does mean something to us, and it's uh, certainly encouraging to make uh, more videos and uh, hopefully better videos. I know that uh, my last several videos have been pretty boring, mostly just me talking, like right now, but <laughs> that's kind of what's going on. There's there's nothing, you know, there's no farm related activity really to happen. And most of my fabrication product uh, projects have been pretty boring. But anyway, enough of that. Uh, fan mail, so uh, this this starts off, um, I'm gonna, well, I'm gonna start this off with uh, Another YouTuber, um, his name's Rick, and uh, his YouTube channel is uh, Marchindy, M-A-R-C-H-I-N-D-Y. Um, some of you guys probably know him. Uh, he, uh, you know, he's pretty good about watching other farming channels. You guys know the regular circle of, uh, you know, the people in the farming community. We all watch each other's videos. Uh, March Indy, he's pretty, uh, you know, he partakes regularly. Um, he has a little over 100 subscribers, and he's just an exceptionally nice man. So uh, a while ago, he sent me this uh, maple syrup out of Michigan. I guess a good friend of his uh, makes this stuff, and uh, he watched a video one time where I mentioned that my wife often makes me pancakes. And uh, yeah, I'm a very lucky husband. Um, so he thought that I should have some real maple syrup. And uh, so um, I got braces in my mouth like right after he sent me this syrup. And so for a while I wasn't eating bready things, which was kind of tough. But um, this morning I had pancakes for the first time in, in quite some time and I got to finally try out some of this maple syrup. Let me tell you guys, it's amazing. It's, there's nothing like the real stuff. Um, I don't think I've ever had the real, real maple syrup that's just uh, straight boiled sap. I don't know, I'm not familiar with the whole process, but this stuff is really, really amazing. When I first tried it, uh, I thought, wow, that's it, it's, it's relatively, uh, you know, powerful <laughs> compared to the stuff that you get in the store. And, uh, you know, I put it on the pancakes and oh my goodness, it is so good. I'm going to have a really, really hard time uh, when I'm through with this maple syrup. I, I'm going to have to uh, probably have Rick send me more. So, but that's stuff I will pay for. Anyway, so uh, yesterday I uh, got home from work and there was a package on my, in my doorstep. And I was thinking, ah, oh, well, I, I don't remember ordering anything about that size. Uh, I shook it and it goes clankety clank. And so I saw, <laughs> I saw the name on the front and I was thinking, oh, you gotta be kidding me. Uh, Rick struck again. So he got me this gate closer opener, um, Spico gate latch. There's a picture of it assembled. And, uh, yeah, so, so, you know, here's his note. I keep watching you open your gate to the cows. Thought this would help as it can be opened from a horse and it keeps the gate from sagging. Give it a try and open that maple syrup. Take care, Rick. So Rick, you're the man. You, you are such a, such a very kind person. My goodness. Uh, that will be installed very soon, uh, more than likely today or tomorrow. Um, that that's going to be really nice. The the, the chain and the uh, the little doggy leash hasp, it works, but it's a little bit of a pain. Um, definitely hard to do with one hand, and this is uh, this is really nice. This is going to help out. So uh, Rick, I have no no way to really you know tell you 
Thank you, uh, because it, you know this is a really genuine, thoughtful thing of somebody to do, and uh, it says a lot about your character. So, if you guys haven't, um, check out Marchindi. Um, that's how it's spelt. If you can read my tiny little handwriting, uh, check him out. Uh, he's got a great channel. He has a uh, a John Deere 530. I'm pretty sure it's been totally restored. The thing is just amazingly clean. And uh, he's, he's got a couple other John Deere tractors. I think he has a 990. And uh, yeah, he, he's a he likes the green the green stuff. So uh, he's got got some good videos. Uh, him and his family out making hay and all that. So yeah, definitely check him out. Good guy. Um, so on to milling machine and machining parts. So uh, making new bearings for the hay grapple. And this is, I mean, this is gonna be some real simple, uh, you know, milling footage here. But for those of you that are, are unfamiliar with this, I know that I kind of walked you through when I got the mill, that you have your X and your Y and your Z um, and your DRO. So, uh, I'm gonna put you guys up on my head again, and we're going to machine apart. So I already did the inch and 11 sixteenths bore. Um, I did that with a Forstner bit. And uh, so what we're doing now is we're gonna punch uh, holes, uh, the through holes for the 5 16 18 bolts to uh, thread through and into the C channel. So uh, yeah, sit tight, we'll be right back. All right, folks, so uh, just to, to give you the basics of, of what I'm doing here, um, we got a part here and uh, we have a zero point. So here you have your, uh, your X and your Y. Here's our zero point, this upper corner. So what I do is I cut my parts out, I deburr the edges, and then I will pick uh, a good corner, uh, the squarest corner. This stuff I cut on my table saw and it is a very cheap uh, crappy table saw <laughs> and uh, so these aren't perfectly square so anyhow I take a punch I don't know if you guys can see that and I mark my zero point. Uh, the reason that I do that is because uh, I'm doing this in multiple steps so I didn't want to do multiple tool changes with one part in the, in the vise so I did all my bores and uh, I wanted to make sure that I always come off the same plane to get my other hole locations. So your zero point is, is important to stick with it because if I go like this and then machine my holes after doing my bore, uh, the imperfections in my cut, uh, as far as dimensionally with the, with the part, um, could make my holes offset from the center of the bore. So. What we have is uh, this first hole on the X plane is three eighths of an inch. Uh, th these are three inch centers. Uh, uh, yeah, so three inch centers. So the first hole is three eighths of an inch and the second one is three and three eighths. And uh, my halfway point, what I did was I took my set of calipers and I got my overall width of the part and I divided that by two. Um, to try and make things uh, match, uh, be consistent throughout these. I measured uh, four or five of them and then I got my average. And then I divided that by two, which gives me 3.125. So, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It was, it was 1.425. And so you can see there I'm a half a thou off. That's not a big deal. Um, so I probably should relabel that. But anyhow guys, um, so we have our Y plane and we have our X and what we're going to do, we're going to throw in our part. So, uh, I, since I have my zero point indexed off of this, this part of the vise and this part of the vise, what I do is I will use uh, something straight. In this case, I'm using a flat file and I'll index the part off that edge and uh, so I'm already at 0.375 because that's where I finished my last uh, my last cut so let's uh, let's go ahead and bore so 
I pack drill so you guys can see I'm not just ramming the drill bit all the way down. And the reason that I do that is so that you don't end up with really long pigtails because the long pigtails like to clog up your uh, your shot back. Okay, so I want to go to uh, 3.375. Here we go, boom. Unlock my Z and come in and do a peck. Okay, kill power, do the brake, unlock, and I have perfect three inch hole centers. Consistent, same way every time. Once I'm done with this, I'm gonna come back through I'm gonna use a countersink to just take the sharp edge off and uh, I'll use my favorite deburring tool and clean up the insides. So, uh, so now we're already set up for our other hole. Index, clamp, and 3.375. And that's as simple as it is. Um, you know, when you're doing a, a run of parts like this, you try Try and do things as efficiently as possible. Um, one thing that I could do, uh, another way to do this would just be to uh, do all of my right hand hole locations and just pull the part out, index it, pull the part out, and index it, etc. But in this case, since I'm not uh, having to move the table, you know, 15 inches or 20 inches, this is it's easy enough just to move. Move the table three inches and and move along. Three, seven, five. Boom. So on most mills, when you set your gib locks, your gib lock there, that keeps the table from moving around as you're machining your part. Most of the time, you're gonna get uh, movement. So you, you can put your axis right on three, seven, five, and then you hit your gib lock and it will uh, it will move and generally it'll move in the direction that you uh, That you are moving your axis. So if you're moving it to the right uh, I normally shoot for about 10 to 15 thousandths above uh, my My specified location and then I hit my gib lock and it's usually gonna get me somewhere within a half of a thou or a thou um, On parts like this half of a thousandth of an inch really doesn't uh, you know, real, really, for most things that I'm going to be doing, one thousandths or two thousandths isn't a big deal. But I like to, uh, I like to shoot for zero if I can. So, anyway, guys, I'm not going to bore you with uh, drilling the rest of these parts. But um, yeah, so that's just kind of the basics of using a mill. Um, you know, it gets a lot more exciting when you're using an end mill, uh, a rougher or something like that, and you're actually machining out a pocket. Um, that's that's some pretty cool stuff. Um, in this case, I'm using it basically like a drill press. But the big advantage to this over a drill press is your consistency. So uh, when you use a drill press, you know, you would, you would take your print like this, and then you would have uh, your center punch, and so you'd have to lay it out. So you'd, uh, you'd have to make all these marks, take a hammer, whack, and uh, then you'd put it in your drill press vise and then, you know, sink your tooling into it. But with this, you don't have to do that. And y your consistency of your part, it, it just is so much better than in a drill press. Um, so that's the big advantage to this. It's a lot faster than having to lay your parts out and uh, it's uh it just simply does a better job so anyhow guys uh thanks a lot for watching appreciate it uh once again if you get a chance check out march indy uh super good guy and uh yeah thanks for watching y'all have a good weekend and we'll catch you on the next video